In today's show, I have a Sony DV Cam deck. This is a DV Cam and Mini DV, so it'll do both the professional DV Cam as well as consumer DV. It'll take both the full size and the mini style tape. It's a DSR-11. This one here, well, it doesn't load. Doesn't work. We're gonna take this one apart and see what's going on. Check it out. This time I have a DSR-11 Sony. This is a DV Cam uh, DV recorder. It came to me with the top removed, by the way. I didn't take the screws out. It came with the screws in the bag. So let's uh, see what's going on. It says it plays and stops. So we're going to take a look and see what's going on with this one. Swing this board up so that I can observe the mechanism. This one requires a special power adapter. It's a, uh, what is the output? It's a 12 volt, 1.3 amp output, but if you look at the connector, it's a non-standard connector with a very small pin. So this has actually been sitting here for for a few weeks because uh, the fellow brought it in neglected to bring, bring the adapter. And of course you can see it's a special adapter that they use for this one here. Looks like he bought it from Best or Base 2 Media used this at one point. It's now owned by another production company that archives. So we'll swap, flip the board out here and load a tape and see what it does. Now you can load a standard mini T, a mini DV or the larger tapes. So the, the tape hubs himself will actually move back and forth to load the mini tapes or the standard tapes. So I'm just gonna grab a mini DV tape. The mini tape slides into a slot on the front. Now there is no well, I guess there is a guide, because when you put in a wider tape, it would uh, open up this gate a little more. Right, when the wider tape goes in, a wider tape would push down on these buttons to release. And once they do that, then these other blocks will release. So this is what tells the unit. It also, it also drops down the guide in the middle here. You see, if we look down in the middle, if I push these down, you'll see there's a couple little teeth here. If I push these down, both of those drop down, and this one releases up top here so that you can push a, a different size tape in. Otherwise, the guides here will stop you from, from putting the tape in, so it won't go in. You have to put it in the middle here. That was Sony's answer to the dual size cassette. Just a couple little plastic guides to guide you to where to put the tape. And I guess I better turn this thing on. Oh, it's on. There it goes. And then the tape will thread. Well, the tape didn't thread. It's just sitting there. What happens if I try to do something? Will it do anything if I push any buttons? Nope. So, this has a mechanical problem. It won't eject either. I don't have any cost indicators, but it won't eject and it won't load. The way this thing is behaving, it's almost like it's a power problem, you know? I just pulled the back off of it so that, and the bottom so I can measure the voltage. That voltage is jumping around. What I'm curious as to whether the AC adapter is uh, what the fault is. 
you see the voltage goes up and then it drops down as it tries to start up so we may have a, a power supply problem here on this unit there's the 12 volt rail right there I wonder if I give this unit an external 12 volt supply whether it will still do what it's doing so I'll set my power supply to 12 volts and we'll just try connecting external power to the unit and see whether the unit will turn on because it might be the adapter that's at fault that's why I made them bring the adapter in and not just try to power it up this way because in case it was a fault with the adapter so give it 12 volts okay interesting it did not it's not doing the same thing let's put this thing around so we can flip the uh, the chassis out and just observe what it does when I power it up I have to turn the power switch on obviously but we'll apply power to the inside of the the jack here and turn it on and I'm getting a caution indicator on here now eject if I try to eject the tape I just shut the camera off only to see it eject the tape so it's doing something more than it was doing a minute ago I'll try it again I'm just going to try loading this tape again and see what happens powering it externally with 12 volts oh and it's just going to sit there we we'll hit the eject button again and See if the tape will eject. So that part's working. I'm thinking something's sticking. So I'm just putting the screws in to hold the chassis in place just for now. I want to look in the bottom. Um, the fact that it was, when it was trying to operate the loading uh, cycle, the power went up to 1.6 amps on my supply, which can supply more than 1.3. The other one can only supply 1.3 and then it drops out. So I think maybe something might be sticking on the mechanism which is causing it to consume more current than the power supply is capable of supplying and therefore it shuts down and it tries to start again because it ejected the tape fine with my power supply. off. Alright, do this connector and probably this one. And then I should be able to lift the board up out of the way to see the mechanism. There's a mode switch here, of course. I don't see anything on the bottom that's hanging up. I wanted to try to put the mechanism through its paces a few times, so I've unsoldered one of the wires here from the loading motor. I'm going to give it about 2.4, 2.5 volts. That should be enough to operate the machine. I'm just going to set my current so that it doesn't draw any more than, say, an amp at the most. Okay, now when I connect this wire up here, we should see the mechanism operate. It should thread the tape. which it does. Go the other way. I'm 
I don't see anything hanging up there. And of course, one reason we always disconnect one wire when we're going to operate a loading motor with external power is so that we don't backfeed and damage any of the drive circuitry. So you always have to be sure you disconnect one wire first before you start doing this type of stuff. Okay, one thing I have noticed that is dry is there's this is it here. This is the top of it. This is the elevator uh, shaft and post for the pinch roller. And it does appear to be that it is dry. So this may be why the thing's mechanism is sticking and uh, not loading up properly. Get in there with some cleaner and clean off that dried grease and we'll get some lubricant down into there as well as onto this back cam here. This is the cam that controls it, drops it down. So like the VHS machines, the Sony VHS machines and many other brands of VHS machine, the uh, cat or the pinch roller is actually elevated and once the tape is pulled into position it drops down and this is the this is the mechanism back here that controls that and this is all dry the grease is dried up on here and the grease is dried up on this post so I'm going to get some molly coat in here to um, lubricate that post and that might be where our problem is with just the mechanism itself sticking so I'm going to get some molly coat into the into the mechanism here and uh, I think I'll try and get some cleaner into the into the switch as well. I don't know that that's the issue though, because it wasn't exper it wasn't exhibiting the the, the classic uh, mode switch problem, like going into the wrong mode and changing modes and so forth on its own. It just wouldn't it wouldn't load when the tape dropped down and it went to begin the loading cycle. It stopped, and I think probably because the mechanism itself was was sticking, and it was overloading when the loading motor came on. It was overloading the power supply causing the power supply voltage to dip and then it, it stopped and restarted again. So I think we'll uh, just put some molly coat on some of the mechanism here, the parts that slide and the parts that move because they're all pretty dry. Although these are plastic parts so they don't need much in the way of lubrication but they still will. You know there are metal parts in here that probably will need some type of lubrication although those ones are those ones are certainly free you can see there's nothing sticking here. But let me get the, the capstan, or the, sorry, not the capstan, the pinch roller post and its control cam. We'll get that lubricated to start. As with all these lubricants, you got to be careful how much you put in because too much is usually worse than not enough because it will attract dirt. So you just want to put a little bit of lubricant on on the moving parts just to prevent the parts from sticking. Okay, that part's working. Let's just plug a monitor into it and see whether I get a picture off this tape. If there's anything on this tape, I don't know if there's anything on this tape, but there is. 
Excellent. And I have a picture. Even better. So it must be a copy of a tape that I did. Yeah, this is a copy of the evaluation tape from my JVC camera. I think this is the JVC tape. Yeah, this would be from the JVC camera. Nice dropouts. Dropout City. It's a it's an old tape. It's a copy of an old tape. It's a digital copy, of course, right? But uh, this would have been, and this tape's got some splices and damage on it. That's why I use it when I'm testing machines of unknown uh, unknown faults. So if it gets chewed up, it's not the only copy. It's a copy of my original tape. Which is nice because in, in DV, you can make a, a DV a perfect quality copy, right? Using the firewire out from one to the firewire in on the other, which is exactly how I did this. So this machine now appears to be playing. The only thing I did to it was lubricate the mechanism. So it's got me thinking that what happened on this one was they probably had been sitting around for a bit and hadn't been used for a little while. Don't know the history, but, but a lot of times my DV decks don't get used every day like they used to. You know, I do I do archiving work, which I know the fellow that owns this. He does archiving work, and he does he does film scanning and so forth. And um, you know, there's days, there's times where I won't see a DV tape. I, I'm fairly busy. I do a lot of VHS, like a lot of VHS and a lot of high eight uh, digitizing, and I do a lot of film, like eight millimeter and super eight film. I do a fair bit of that. I'm sitting on a box of about eighty films right now that I just got in yesterday, so that'll make me some money. Um, but I don't see a lot of, of DV tapes. Like, I'll see nothing near the, the number of tapes that I see for, say, 8mm or VHS. Probably because a DV was a later format and a lot of people, they have their DV cameras still and they're likely still working. And they've transferred them themselves over to their computer. I don't see a lot of DV tapes. I do see them, but they're like not in the huge numbers that I see of other tapes by comparison. So if this is if if he's anything like me, his machine will sometimes sit for a month without being used, maybe longer, without being even turned on, just because of the the, the few tapes that actually come in. And of course, the worst thing for any VCRs is sitting not being used. The grease dries out, mechanisms get stuck, mode switches go dirty. The best thing you can do on a VCR is to run it. Anyway, this one here appears to be doing pretty good. That was the JVC GY DV500 that I shot this with. Uh, this was probably the evaluation, evaluation tape. When I bought the camera I went to the shop and put a deposit on it pending picture quality approval. So basically I told them I'm buying the camera, but I'm taking it out, and I'm going to shoot a tape, and I'm going to look at the quality, and then I'm going to decide whether I'm going to buy this camera or a different one. And most shops will do that. They'll say, well, you know, so listen, give me your rental camera. I'll put a deposit on the new one, but I want your rental camera for a couple of hours. I want to go to shoot some pictures, and I took it down to, I think this is Van Dusen Gardens in Vancouver. Took it down to Van Dusen, shot a tape, took the rental camera back, took the tape home, evaluated it, and then went in and paid them for the camera and tripod that I have now, which I haven't used. I haven't used it in 20 years. I think the last time I used it was 2003. But that would have been 2000 when I picked the camera up. 10,000 bucks for that camera and tripod. I still got the tripod. The tripod's great. I use it with my... Uh, my, my 4K camera. It's a real good Manfrotto uh, tripod with a very expensive head. I think the tripod was over $3,000 for the tripod. So my I, I joke when I'm using my my uh, 4K uh, camera. My It's it's an FDR AX100 and people look at it and say, oh, nice camera. What's the camera worth? And I say, well, the camera's worth two grand, but the tripod's worth three. And they look at me and kind of shake their head. And it's like, yeah, seriously, the legs are worth more than the actual camera itself. But you can see why. Because it is butter smooth. And I tell you, that's a real ENG lens, because you, you don't get 
you don't get nice deep focus like that on the, the consumer cameras. My Sony will do it because it's got a it's got a good size it's got a Zeiss lens, but it you it has full manual control, so I can do the same thing with my 4K camera, but the ENG camera will do it even better. Three chip ENG camera. Anyway. I'm just rambling on here as I get this thing played to make sure it's it's operating properly and everything's looking good. So I think I'm just going to continue to test this thing. I'm going to run I run this tape through it probably a half a dozen times before I send it off. But um, it's working. And for those that w are wondering, is there sound? Yes. And for those that are wondering what happens if I flip the little switch on the back, to pal, well. Flip the switch and then turn it on and it outputs NTSC interesting that's interesting because that's, you know, that's weird because it's gone to PAL you can see when I flipped it to PAL it's got the outputs gone to PAL but uh, maybe that just affects it for recording you have to record a PAL signal and then it'll play it you see there's NTSC and there's the PAL but uh, when I play the tape back it doesn't matter switch so it just it plays whatever the tape is in that's just for recording I would imagine that's what that's for is so you can use this machine for either NTSC or PAL and it will play back whatever has gone into it like most of the DV stuff if I put a PAL if I put a PAL tape in my DV player it'll play it but it'll play it in PAL that switch on the back is just for setting the recording anyway there it is I'll uh, run this thing through its motions a few times Let's eject so you can watch what it does. You see, the tape spindles, when you put a regular tape in, the, the, the spools are wider, or when you put in a mini tape like this, as soon as you push the tape in, it detects that it's a mini tape because of the little, the little cogs on the side here that aren't pushed down so when you push the tape in it knows it's a mini tape and then it kicks the spools in alright this one's done Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.